talked about the young man in the elevator and the absence of judgment. The unabashed kindness. Yes. Just kindness. <sighs> yes. It was funny because that really resonated with me because I was thinking if I had a chance to come up here, my big question is why is it or how is it that we often stand in judgment? Is that something of maybe the physical condition that allows us to try and differentiate from different situations? Yeah, because judgment in and of itself is like choosing. It's like choices. And if you are the creator of your own experience and you are, then don't you need to be in a place where you can come to your own conclusions about what you prefer? So, of course, evaluation and deciding, decision, judgment is all part of that process. But when judgment works against you is when you push against something. Feel the difference between being at a buffet with a lot of variety and choosing what you prefer as compared with condemning what you don't prefer. Oh, that shouldn't be there. Get that out of there. That shouldn't be there. That's going to get all my good stuff. Get that away. Trying to push something away is when judgment becomes toxic to you. Because in this attraction-based universe, there's no exclusion. So when you say yes to what you are choosing, you're including it in your vibration. But when you shout no at what you don't want to include, you are including it in your vibration. Because the universe doesn't differentiate between yes and no. It's the attention to the subject. Now, you might say, well, what about the intention within the attention? If it is my intention to get it, and it's my intention not to get that, wouldn't my intention serve me? And we say, yes, but when you're pushing against your intention is thwarted by your own contradicted energy. And that's where you're going out of alignment. You've put all of your intentions in your vortex, and Source hears it, and Source is delivering, oh, endless ways, endless ways that are ripe and ready for you right here and now. But in your awareness that what you want isn't yet, then you set up a vibration of resistance where you disallow it from coming. So even though the answers are coming and the situations are unfolding and the opportunities are plentiful, you keep missing it because you're not in the receptive mode where you can receive it. One of the things that we think is really worth pointing out is that because this is a vibrational universe and because you are interpreters of vibration, then it is accurate to say this is a perceptual universe. It's as you perceive it to be. And you perceive it to be because of the lens, so to speak, that you have active. So how thoughts are turned to things, most people are under the flawed premise that everybody sees things like they see them. But the longer you live, the more you realize that that isn't true. And so often you find yourself trying to explain or even defend your position to others who are seeing it differently from you. And that is perhaps the most detrimental habit that you have, of trying to talk somebody else into seeing it the way you see it, because that sort of judgment is trying to push away their wrong opinion in order to make way for your right opinion. Only your right opinion gets lost in the mix, and your attention to what you think is wrong becomes dominant in your vibration. Right. So everything that feels good to you, to any of you, what feels good feels good for this reason. You're in alignment with it. Anything that doesn't feel good feels not good for this reason. You're out of alignment with something wanted. Every single time, no exceptions. So we can use that as a tool, the judgment, and like you said, choosing that which is pleasing to us as opposed to condemning that which isn't. But you see, the reason that you would condemn someone else is because you're not understanding, and a lot of people feel this way. If you are still living a conditional life where you really believe that your happiness is dependent upon these conditions changing, and since those people don't want to change the conditions, they don't even agree with you that that's a condition that should be changed, or they would like to change it to something that you don't want, then their opinion feels like a threat to your happiness because your happiness is tied to your being able to change the condition. Oh, did you get that? 
So in a conditional world, if you believe that the conditions have to change for you to feel good, then you got to round them up and you've got to indoctrinate them and you've got to wrestle them to the ground and you got to make them agree with you before you can feel good. And that's not happening because the entire universe is not working with you in that regard. So in that case, it would be the same as building up the resistance and putting yourself completely out of alignment, even though the focus of desire is... It, it, it's it's proximate enough, but you're coming at it from the wrong yes, angle. Yes, and even though you're well-meaning, and even though what you want is for good reasons. This is the premise that you were born knowing, and this is the premise that as you find your way back to it, as you return to this knowledge of who you are, then everything will start feeling really wonderful to you, and this closing, this gap between your new desire and where you stand will become just a really delicious experience. But this is the thing that you really want to remember. You came with diverse interests because your diversity is your greatest strength. Because out of difference is born new idea, and the new idea is what the eternalness is all about. If you could remember that no one else has to agree with you, that it isn't agreement with the others that is required for your happiness, it is agreement with yourself. We want to make that so strong. It is never agreement with someone else that was meant to be your plan. It was always meant to be your agreement with yourself. So you said, I'll go into diversity. Yay, diversity. And from it, I will choose what I prefer. Yay, my preferences. And I will launch rockets of desire and source will acknowledge my desire and hold steady the vibration of it for me. So that it's a sure thing that what life has caused me to desire, I can achieve. And no one else is necessary to the equation, but they were of enormous benefit because they helped you launch the rocket. So you want to say to them, thanks for your diversity that helped me to uniquely and precisely choose. And thank you to Source for holding the vibration of what I have asked for and for causing the culmination of its expansion. And good for me, who's aware of the way I feel, so that I can stay in vibrational accord with what I've asked for. And then I will be the turner of those thoughts to things for the world to behold. Now here it gets a little tricky. Now the world beholds me in my abundance or in my fame and fortune, or in my happily ever after of whatever it is. And now I am part of their diversity. So they might like me, they might not like me, but how they feel about me is not my business. Because I can't do anything about how they feel about me. The only control I have is between me and my own desires, you see. And once you figure that out, and once you're consistent with that, then you'll be out and you'll be evaluating and you'll see people doing things and you won't choose it, but you won't feel the need for them to change their lifestyle or their beliefs in order for you to feel good. And then you will be free. And in their differences of things that you don't choose, you will discover what you do choose. So their very existence that you oppose, maybe with every fiber of your being, is what is causing you to carve out the perfect life for you. And isn't it nice that that's the way it is all for all, you see? That's why Source can remain in that place of pure positive energy all the time. Because Source lives in step five. Understanding that your contrast is good for you and everyone else. So there's never a reason to condemn someone else in their brokenness or in their sickness or in their contrast or even in their abusiveness or in their anything that you don't like. There's no reason to push against them because it doesn't get you to where you want to be. And in fact, it will get you to where you do not want to be because you get what you think about whether you want it or not. So... We will make this strong statement to you, to all of you, that the reason that anyone would feel judgment or need to control another is because you're not secure in your own alignment yet. The reason anyone would worry that someone's going to suck their energy is because they're not secure in their energy. 
The reason anyone would worry about anything is because they've had lapses in alignment. But you can restore yourself to that with far less effort than it takes to learn a computer program. It doesn't take much because the universe will back you up in all of this. There's not a shred of evidence to the contrary of any of this anywhere. So when you decide that you want to feel good and you begin focusing in ways that do feel good, and then you begin watching the manifestation, the turning of that intention into manifestations and coordinated rendezvous and conversations and manifestations of all manner, then you get your sea legs. Then you start remembering, oh, yeah, I remember who I am. I'm someone who thinks, and I'm someone who thinks deliberately, and I'm someone who can focus, and I'm someone who uses the laws of the universe to my advantage, and I use momentum to my advantage, which is saying I use law of attraction to my advantage, and I focus deliberately when it's appropriate for me, and I get diffused when it isn't, and I have control of this. And now, life is so fun because the diversity doesn't scare me anymore. It doesn't sicken me anymore. It doesn't disgust me anymore. It doesn't make me feel intolerant or judgmental. It thrills me. The diversity thrills me just like a department store that has more to choose from rather than two items or a restaurant that has a broad menu rather than something specific that I might not like. In other words, in the diversity, I have more choices. And in more choices, I have more power. But in more choices, I must exercise more control of my focus you see i must care more about how i feel and i must focus with more intentionality and when i do when you do the payoff is enormous because now you're moving through life and it's new in every moment and so is the diversity new in every moment and so there are new options for new ideas and that's like fresh breath of air every time a new desire is born within you it's new life that you have given birth to but you know why it feels that way because all of us rode that rocket with you when you discover something new from the diversity that you are living out here on the leading edge and you're doing it all day every day we are thrilled with the newness of it and we give our undivided attention to it that's why you can't back off of it so we give our undivided attention to it and when you do back off of it, you feel the loss of it. And when you turn your attention to it, you feel the breath of fresh air of it. And when you believe it, you are thrilled by the momentum of it. And when you doubt it, you are hurt by the clamoring of the resistance that happened when you stuck your stick in the spoke that was moving so fast. And so then you recognize what your emotions mean and you let your new thoughts come. You know when you say, oh, I just got the best idea? You know what that means? You were in the receptive mode and you translated vibration into something meaningful. And that thought, if you could revel in the importance of that manifestation, that thought is a manifestation. You made it happen. You allowed it to happen. You put it in your vortex. You doubted it when you did, but you put it in your vortex. But now somehow, some way, you've managed to line up with it. You're in the receiving mode as our friend was. That's why we call her up here. And then boom. The idea comes to you, and then you just revel in that idea. You don't lament, oh, it's just an idea. It hasn't come to manifestation. Oh, it's such a good idea. It's such a good business, but it needs so much money that I don't have. You don't do that. You revel in the deliciousness of the idea, and as you are able to hold that vibrational frequency, then the next comes, and the next comes, and the next comes. So idea feels good. Idea feels good. Idea feels good. Idea feels good. Rendezvous feels good. Everything feels good as it flows and flows and flows, and others are watching you in amazement. Ah, seems like you just barely expressed your desire for that. And boom, 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 boom. There it is for you. What are you, blessed or something? Yeah. Yeah. I figured out how to let the laws of the universe work for me. I decided to accept my worthiness. I decided to accept that I am cared about, that I am loved. I decided to accept that I'm a good person. I decided to accept that what I lived before doesn't matter, that the only thing that matters is where I am now in relationship to what I want. And I've got the juices flowing now. That's how life is supposed to feel for you. It's the way it feels for us about you. We revel in your intentionality, whether you're blocking it or not. And you know how you can tell that we're reveling in your good flow by your negative emotion. Because your negative emotion means you're doing something different about you than we are.